Now, how are you really feeling? Yeah. I said to him, you know, you didn't sign up for a girlfriend who was going to be bald and sick. And I wouldn't be upset if you left because I can completely understand that it's not what any young person would want to go through. And the first thing I said was, okay, thanks. I'll see you later. Good luck. <laughs> he was basically like, you're an idiot. <laughs> Day one of cancer. I heard the words and I sat there and thought to myself, Gemma, you're going to die. So I tried to do a beeline for my boss uh, to tell him that my girlfriend's literally just been diagnosed with cancer and I actually couldn't physically get myself to speak. Why is that? <laughs> Neither of us can take it seriously. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, God. My mum sat us all down as a family and she described it as just a, a little blob that was just there on dad's brain. I didn't want to ask any questions because I didn't want it to be real, I guess. So I just disappeared. When my nan's cancer came back, a lot of us in the family went to get tested for the BRCA2 gene. I tested positive. It puts me in a higher risk category of possibly developing ovarian or breast cancer. I actually didn't think I was going to get emotional today. <laughs> my exact first thought with Gemma was how, how it could happen to such a, a beautiful, young, intelligent girl. My first thought with, with Dad was, was why. I remember within a few seconds of arriving home, 10 of my friends were at my doorstep. Hey Gemma, how are you feeling? Pretty groovy. We ordered burgers and kind of just sat in this stillness together. The burgers were good though. <laughs> if I could speak to my younger self, I would tell him to just talk about it with your friends. It just makes it so much easier. You're gonna come out of this stronger than you are going in. Just live for the now and just really be in that moment. Feel what you need to feel. Cry if you want to for as long as you need to. I would tell her to be gentle with herself. And I would tell her that she doesn't need to worry because she has incredible people around her. I think particularly for young men, it's really hard to open up and share and talk. And then when you go through stuff like this and you're just forced to try and be tough the whole time, it's just, it's so taxing. I didn't want to bombard my family and scare everyone. And so for me, Canting Connect and a lot of other amazing cancer survivors were the thing that made me feel not so alone. There's always someone there to listen and honestly sometimes it's easier opening up to a stranger. For me, worrying about my family members, I was so grateful for a place I could send them to where they could speak to other people who had family members going through it. When I first heard the word cancer, it was accompanied by morbid feelings. But now I think of change and hope and moving forward.